morning youtube as you can see we are in the car night tv is on the Talk move i had an idea for a new segment on the channel um i watch some other youtubers and they kind of go to infamous crime locations and I thought about that because I've always had a morbid curiosity when it comes to crimes, especially crimes that have happened here in state. And there is an infamous crime that was committed by Larry Jean Bell. Actually, he committed a number of crimes, but the most famous one that he is known for is the murder of a young lady by the name of Sherry Face Smith. And she happens to live not too far away from me, about 20, 25 minutes at the most. My mom actually lives in the town of Lexington, South Carolina. So it's not an unusual drive for me. I just wanted to see if I could find the home where this crime took place. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit more about what actually occurred as soon as I can get my bearings about me and, and actually figure out where I'm going. There was also a nine-year-old little girl by the name of Deborah May Helmick who was abducted and later murdered by Larry Jean Bell. And the funny thing is he was never known by just Larry or Larry Jean or Larry Bell. It always had to be all three names, Larry Jean Bell, as though he was some kind of famous dignitary or something that's the thing that always stuck out to me about him also what stuck out to me is the fact that sherry's murder is the one that was a little more highly publicized although he did tragically kill a nine-year-old little girl and i used to take not offense to that but i used to wonder why her murder was not prioritized as well but as it turned out, there was good reason for Sherry to be in the spotlight. He did some awful, awful things to both of them, no less. But he actually called Sherry's family regarding the whereabouts of little Deborah May Helmet's body. And so I see why that was kind of pushed to the forefront. But you guys are gonna come along with me as I travel to Lexington and as I tried to find these locations I actually located the find a grave pages for both Sherry and Deborah so I'm actually going to try to go to the cemeteries as well so stick along with me let's see what we can come up with okay guys so as it turns out there is a high school right across the street from the house there's not much by way of parking around around here, so I'm not going to be able to stay long, but I just want to show you guys the house. I'll see if I can zoom in on it. This is the house where Larry Jean Bell abducted Sherry Faye Smith. I'm actually in the median of the highway, so I have to hurry up and move, but this is the actual location. That's the driveway. It's very long. He took her from the driveway as she was getting the mail. Sherry Faye Smith was a senior in high school at the time of her abduction. So roughly 17, 18 years old. She had just come from a pool party with her boyfriend and some of her classmates. When she arrived home, she drove down that long driveway to check the mail. I'm guessing that's what they did when they got home. I'm not sure. Her car was found idling at the mailbox with the door open her dad who was a pastor was in his study at the time and he looked up and he looked out the window he saw that sherry had arrived home but he found it odd that her car was sitting there for such a long time so in the time it took him to walk from his study to go outside to check things out sherry was already gone he thought maybe she had had a diabetic episode didn't know what was going on but as a parent he was worried he went outside sherry was nowhere 
her car as i stated was idling her door was open the driver's side door nothing they looked around and they looked around i can imagine him calling her name trying to figure out where his daughter was only to no avail the family called the sheriff's department who decided to bypass the 24-hour waiting period to declare someone missing and they got on the case immediately there was no trace of sherry they could not find her for nothing they looked and they looked lexington south carolina covers over 500 square miles so they really had their work cut out for them but once again sherry was nowhere to be found it wasn't until the family started receiving phone calls that the first clues would begin to come in a man with a really really country accent began calling the phone the family would answer and he would give little bits of and clues about sherry's whereabouts but he would never say who he was he did not want to ransom he didn't want anything he just wanted to taunt the family to let them know that he has sherry in his possession he would also go on to explain that a letter would be arriving in the mail but investigators were not about to waste time waiting for that to arrive so they went and they woke the postmaster in the middle of the night and he accompanied them down to the post office and they painstakingly sifted through all of that mail looking for a letter addressed to the smith family and after about 30 minutes they hit pay dirt sadly the letter was from sherry herself she had written her last will and testament at the behest of Larry Jean Bell. He told her to write a letter to her family explaining that she wanted her casket closed. And I'll read an excerpt of that letter here. It is a very sad and just all around terrifying case to even take in that he would make this young lady write her last will and testament to send to her family. So here's an excerpt of that letter. Last will and testament. I love you, Mommy, Daddy, Robert, Dan, and Richard, and everyone else, and all other friends and relatives. I'll be with my father now. Go, please, don't worry. Just remember my witty personality and great special times we all share together. Please don't ever let this ruin your lives. Just keep living one day at a time. Sherry's mom and sister were incredibly brave throughout this whole ordeal. They would speak to Larry Jean Bell a number of times, under the guidance of the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, members of the Columbia, South Carolina FBI, as well as the Lexington County Sheriff's Department, they would be there and they would be able to obtain recordings of the phone calls and they were able to ask questions. Larry was incredibly ev evasive. He never ever narrowed in on any specific thing. He just told them things that he knew would hurt them such as Sherry didn't suffer. She chose strangulation as her method of death. He just taunted the family and he was always a step ahead of the police. He was stupid, but he was smart at the same time. That's an oxymoron, I know, but it's true. He evaded capture for so long. Sherry's mom would go on to ask whether or not sherry was there with him now and he just said that she was a part of him now mind body and soul before hanging up the phone and they believe that that is about the time that sherry was killed she was already dead as a matter of fact when he made that statement at that point the chase was on they had to get answers for the smith family especially after the fact that Larry Jean Bell gave specific instructions on where they could find Sherry's body. They went to the exact coordinates that Larry had given, and as it turned out, they did find Sherry's body in the Lexington County area, or about 17 miles away. I'm not sure if that's still Lexington County, but it was about 17 miles away. They found her remains, and it was, it was time to put this man under the jail. Just a brief interlude. Looking at the playback, it looks like my audio was not on par with the video. So just bear with me as I try to make this upload. Technology can be unpredictable that way. I hope it works itself out by the time that I upload. But 
you never know. Getting back to the story, investigators took Sherry's letter down to the lab to see if they could use it to pick up any valuable clues. A technician used a special machine that kind of works on the opposite principle of a printing press to see if she could determine any marks or just things that the naked eye couldn't see. And as it turned out, they could. They were able to lift a an etching with the name Joe on it. And it had a partial phone number. So they took what they could use and they called every combination of that, that phone number until they were able to contact someone named Joe. Joe lived somewhere in Alabama, I believe, but investigators did travel there to speak with him. And Joe explained that his parents lived in the Lake Murray area in South Carolina and that the phone call had originated from their home. They turned around, they went and spoke with Joe's parents. They confirmed that they had been out of town for about six weeks, but they did have a house sitter by the name of Larry Jean Bell. Joe's mother was growing more and more concerned at every turn because the more investigators spoke, the more she believed that this had Larry Jean written all over it. He not only fit the profile, but they were taken down to the station to listen to the recordings that they were able to garner when Larry Jean was making those phone calls and both of them confirmed that that was their house sitter. He was due to come into work about 7.30 the next morning. So investigators bided their time. They waited to see what he was going to do, but they also put surveillance on Larry Jean's house because they were not gonna take any chances of him escaping through the night. They didn't know if he was on to them because he had been a step ahead the whole entire time. But right on schedule, Larry Jean arrived at work. So as it turned out, he did not know that he was under surveillance and that they were on to him. And he was arrested without incident right there at the parents' house. That just goes to show how brazen he was, that he believed that he was smarter than everyone else around him, that no one would ever figure out what he had done. Even making those phone calls was a risky move. But Larry Jean didn't care. He just needed the notoriety. He needed the attention, which is why I believe he was arrested without incident because now it was finally time to tell his story. He had already seen the news. He had already seen the news articles that were written about him. As a matter of fact, when he picked up Joe's parents from the airport, he regaled them with tales from the time that they left the airport to the time that they arrived at their home. This man wanted people to know what he did. He really wanted to live in infamy. He had even turned his attention to Sherry's sister, Dawn. As a matter of fact, when they had Sherry's memorial service, they took personal items from her room to kind of lure Larry Jean out because he had made it clear that he wanted Dawn next. But in the meantime, in between time, Larry had set his sights on a nine-year-old girl who was playing outside with her brother named Deborah May Helmick. He abducted her in broad daylight as he had done with Sherry he took her and he killed her almost immediately. He didn't taunt her family from what I could find. I don't see any sources that said that he did what he did with Sherry's family, with Deborah May's family, but he killed that little girl because he could not find someone else who fit the profile of Sherry. But her sister did. They usually got mistaken for twins because they look so much alike. So Sherry really was what he wanted. Dawn was the closest match. But Deborah May was a crime of opportunity. Once he had killed Deborah May, he called Cherry's family and told them where they could find her body. Knowing that investigators were probably listening, and he actually told Dawn that she couldn't be protected all the time because security was heightened around her. They were well aware that he wanted her, and they were not about to let that happen. But while they were protecting the Smith family, everyone else was vulnerable which led to Deborah May being taken in broad daylight and murdered. Don't get me wrong, that's no one's fault but Larry Jean Bell's, but that just goes to show you how brazen these serial killers can be. He was not worried about whether or not they were on the hunt for him. He was on the hunt for the next best thing. I also need to add that investigators launched a search warrant on Larry Jean's home once he was arrested. And as the profile had predicted, his house was in pristine condition, especially the room where he had been staying. But that was just a facade because underneath those pristine covers and blankets and everything, there was a nasty thin mattress. So he knew how to make things look good on the surface, 
But when you dug deep, it was just a nasty mess, much like his head. These crimes occurred in 1985, the year I was born. And what makes it personal for me is because my family was experiencing the joy of having a new baby while two other families 800 miles away because I was living in New Jersey at the time, but still 800 miles away, two other families were grieving the loss of their daughters. It's truly a sad state of affairs once you put that into perspective. But one bright spot in all of this is that Larry Jean did receive the death penalty and he was executed in the South Carolina electric chair in 1996. So adios, Larry Jean. I wanted to visit Deborah May's home, but she lived in the Shiloh trailer park and that's all the information that I could find. So when I did a Google search to see where that was located, it looks like it doesn't exist anymore. I even went as far as calling the registrar of deeds to kind of find out if the property had been renamed or if it's no longer called that. I couldn't find any information. The lady who I spoke to was very nice. She told me that I would have to come down there and kind of do the research myself. I didn't think that it was necessary to go through all of that to find a place that may or may not be in existence anymore. But I had plans on showing you guys that area. I'm kind of disappointed that I'm not able to. But that's the way things go. This was 1985 after all. So a lot has changed in Richland County. And a lot has changed in Lexington County. So Sherry was from Lexington County. Deborah May was from Richland County. So he kind of crossed the county lines to abduct her. But the counties are like this, you know you won't even know that you crossed into another unless you see the signs because they're just that close together so um, i imagine he didn't have to go very far but he did cross county my lines. goal now is to attempt to find the cemetery plot of both girls if i could find deborah may's plot and it's relatively close to this area then i'll visit both but i'm already in lexington so i'm gonna try to find sherry's grave site so I can show you guys where that is. It shouldn't be too far away from here, but we'll see. Okay, guys, we have arrived at the cemetery. It was a rather abrupt turn. I almost missed it, but we're here. Let's see if we can find Sherry's grave. So the cemetery is not large by far. I'm parked in the shade, which is why I might appear a little darker, but the plots are all down in the ground. There are none with like risen headstones. So that's gonna make it a little bit more difficult. The find a grave page says that it's in the east section of the cemetery. All I know is north, south, south, west, east, but when you're coming in, that's kind of opposite. So it looks like I got my work cut out for me. Her mom is buried out here as well. So if they're close together or if I can find them both, I will include that. Her mom actually passed away in 2003. But for the most part, we are here to look for Sherry. One helpful thing is that she has a photograph on her headstone, but it's in the ground and I don't know where to start. So I'm going to get out and I'm going to look around. There's no one here to ask. They don't have anyone that's on site to give directions or anything. So let's get hunting. This isn't Sherry, but I hate to see stuff like this. That's so sad, a baby boy. Guys, I can say with certainty that I see everybody's grave, except the one that I am looking for. It's a very well-maintained cemetery. I don't think any African-Americans are buried out here. But you didn't hear that from me. A lot of the graves have photos on them, such as this one. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm using that kind of as a guide, but I see everybody except who I'm looking for. So it looks like I'm going to be trekking it for a minute. It's okay. It's kind of a nice day. 
did put my jacket on because it's cold out here and I have nothing but time. So I'm gonna keep looking and I'll update you soon. Update, still not Sherry, but it's a little girl named Amber White. Looks like she was 10 years old. Stuff like this is just so sad to me. But there are no clues on the Find a Grave page where Sherry could be. I've been to almost every section of the cemetery. Like I said, there's not very far to go. This is literally it. It's this section, the middle section, and that section over there beyond my car. And I still have not located her, but I refuse to give up. What do you know? It was right by the gate the entire time. So I actually drove past it on my way in. It looks like the photograph has come off. Um, the grave is still pretty much well maintained. Still has the pink flowers that are in the find a grave page. But this is the grave of Sharon Faye Smith. Clean that off a little bit. 1967 to 1985. And that says blossom on earth to bloom in heaven. But yes, guys, we have made it to our destination. And as morbid as this may seem for some, this is really cathartic for me because I read so much about this case over the years. But to be here, to be connected to the victim, it's a different type of thing for me. You know, this is just not the usual type of YouTube video for me. But rest in peace to her. You know, it looks like she's at peace. I can't be sure of that. None of us know what happens in the next life, but she's here. I'm going to see again if I can find her mother. And actually, I have just by talking. It's right in front of her. Hilda Cartrett Smith, beloved wife, mother, nanny, sister, and friend. So mom and daughter together again. She's right in front of Sherry. We can consider this trip a success. I really thought that I would find the grave sooner, but I found it when it needed to be found. So I hope you guys enjoy this kind of video let me know your feedback as i said i'm going to look up little deborah may's grave site see if it's accessible to the public it should be if she's just in a cemetery but i'm going to have to check her find the grave page as well and i'll try to head over there next this was kind of out of the way this was a a, a very long trip from the house or maybe just because I didn't know where I was going, but we made it. I'll see you guys at the next stop, provided we make it. But if we don't, of course, I'll keep you updated. I'll let you know what it is. I hate to walk through cemeteries like this because I feel like I'm stepping on people's grave. I mean, absolutely no disrespect. I'm just trying to get out of here, trying to get to my car. So stick around for the next leg of this journey. Okay guys, there is a funeral procession going on out here. So I'm still gonna try to do my thing. It's a little awkward now that all of these people are here, but I just drove 30 minutes so we're gonna make it do what it do. Someone's funeral just took place. It looks like they're doing the finishing touches on the grave site now. But I'm going to check the find a grave page. People are still arriving. I don't want them to think that I'm here for the funeral. I am in no way trying to interrupt. I'm just out here doing what needs to be done. So give me a minute, I'll be back with you. 
this cemetery is a lot larger than the one Sherry Faye was at. So I'm gonna head inside and see if I can get some help from someone who works here. See if they can lead me to the plot instead of me walking around aimlessly. Cause I'll be out here all day. So the guy told me to give him about 15 minutes and he would pull up a map to help me find the plot. So far, so good. I feel really bad about coming here at the time of this funeral, but I didn't know that it was going on. You guys can like see over my shoulder. I have my, my background a little blurred, but we're gonna find Deborah May, so that's a success. With the help of Mr. Ronnie, I was able to find Deborah May's plot. It's also by the gate. I would have been out here all day long if it wasn't for his help. But this is little Deborah May's grave. She was just nine years old at the time of death. I like it when cemeteries are well maintained. Memorial Gardens of Columbia. It's a really nice cemetery, if cemeteries can be nice. But I wanted to do this because Deborah May is always like a an afterthought when it comes to the crimes of Larry Jean Bell. And I feel like she's one of the most tragic because she was a baby, a child, you know, when this all occurred. So I wanted to make it my business to get out here and to make sure that I paid her the respect she deserved. So once again, here's a look at her plot. Memorial Gardens of Columbia, ask for Ronnie. I hope you don't have to anytime soon, but you know, death is an appointment we all must meet. So thank you again, Mr. Ronnie. If you're watching this, I appreciate all your help. You were awesome. I'm gonna get out of here and give the other family some space and time to grieve. But I had to come here. Something was compelling me to come to her her plot. And it's she was born 11 12 75 and she died 6 15 85. So just a few months short, about four and a half, five months short of her 10th birthday. So rest in peace, baby girl. Well guys, I'm back home, I'm safe, I made it. I have to say that that was a very interesting trip. It was weird in a way, but it was also very informative. I enjoyed making this video. I'm definitely going to be doing more. So let me know if you guys like this new format, Murder on the Move. Um, I plan to go to a few more locations, but that's only if that's what you guys wanna see. But thank you for watching this episode of Night TV. I know I told you guys that I probably wouldn't be back before Christmas, but I felt compelled today. So I got up and I made this video. I hope you enjoy it. Leave a like, comment. Let me know how you felt about it so that we can continue or we can 86 this thing, okay? So Merry Christmas and I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs>